what happens when you know something becomes very popular but i think that the artists have to take responsibility for it i you know i cringe when sometimes when i hear some of the things that little wayne says and i know that that's why he's popular because he's talking to a certain group and they understand it but we took our inner conversation and then put it out to the rest of the world you sold it i hear more white kids saying the word digging than i hear black kids or asian kids and you know and i've gotten used to it but it's it's amazing how that has transcended and what does it mean? I don't know. But, you know, I, I just, it, it, it means that what we say is powerful. That's what it means. So we have to be aware of what we say. I refer to my guest, Ralph McDaniels, as a multimedia icon because well beyond his flagship brand, Video Music Box, he has been a true maverick and served his audience via the film industry, the radio waves, the fashion industry, through online presence. And I suspect he's got a few more tricks up his sleeve that I haven't been able to glean through research. So, Ralph, I turn to you. Tell us about the film, the fashion, WQHT on fumes.com and anything else you wish. To well, WQHT is Hot 97, which, um, you know, I worked there for uh, 10 years and I'm still technically an employee there, but I don't have a shift. So they wanted to move me over to Kiss uh, Sister Station. So we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, I, I, I kind of juggle around all of the all the radio stations because, you know, I, I always look at myself, you know, as I can't be belonging to one particular thing and radio is very you know it's very you know like oh you have to be dedicated to just us and you know and i just can't find myself doing that you know i'm dedicated to video music box i own that um i'm dedicated to onfumes.com which is my website which kind of houses a lot of the we're actually changing it around right now, but it houses a lot of the cool footage taped over the last 25 years. VMB Global is an opportunity for new artists trying to get on to get marketing and promotion through the various relationships that we have. And we tell people, you know, yeah, anybody can get into the business, but you have to have the right relationships like Chase, you know, and it is, it's true, you know, just to get the right situations going. So we, through VMB Global, we give the opportunity to get involved with those attorneys, producers, those art directors, those photographers, those videographers, all of the people that help you get to the point where Jay-Z is at or 50 Cent is at. And then the other side of it is the Video Music Box movie. We're doing a movie that is based upon all the things that we talked about today. I talk to people at different radio stations or TV stations, and I tell them, oh, I remember the time that we were going to get some ice cream, and this girl came up to me and said, oh, I want to introduce you to this guy. He's a new artist. He's hard. He's a hardcore artist. You know, he's the hottest cat out, and his name is Notorious B.I.G. And I turned around, and it was this little fat kid standing in front of me, and he was nothing about Notorious B.I.G. that said hardcore to me. And I was like, how you doing? And he was like, how you doing and we were getting mr softy ice cream it was like 90 degree in the middle of the summertime in front of tower records in manhattan no more record stores anymore oh, that was a great experience to go to the record store and i remember me and my friend walking away going notorious <laughs> but that was the beginning of his career and you know and that's that was the guy that became the notorious big but i have stories and stories and stories and stories like that and we want to put this into the movie and we want to talk about you know from puff daddy to puffy to diddy to P. Diddy, we want to talk about everybody and tell their story, you know, from our perspective. And you may not be them in the movie, but you'll know who they are when they show up in the movie. When MTV started Yo! MTV Raps in 1988, were you given the opportunity to audition to work alongside Dr. Dre and Fab Five Freddy? No, um, I, I had actually approached MTV to do a hip-hop show in 86. They told me that middle America was definitely not ready for that, and they didn't want to have anything to do with hip-hop. People in the middle America didn't want to see that. And I was like, well, Run DMC is like real popular right now. You know, they're on tour, they're out there doing their thing, and it's like, you don't understand, Ralph, on television it's different and it's not going to happen. And so, you know, I was a little disappointed by the way they reacted, and I was like, my show was, Video Music Box was popping at that time, so, you know, it just seemed like the right timing. And then in 88 um, or 87, when they started to do Yo! MTV Raps, I was kind of happy at the time because I was also producing and directing all these videos at that time as well. So now we had a national outlet for the videos that we were producing. There were other local shows like mine, Video Music Box, around the country. But here was one show that came on at a particular time that you could reach the whole country in one shot. And so um, I was happy about it. People thought that maybe I was a little, you know, upset that, you know, I wasn't part of it. But I, I never looked at it like that, you know, and I never... You know, I always said to myself, I own what I do. You know, everything that I have with Video Music Box, I own. You know, I don't work for MTV, so I never really wanted to work for MTV. Well, then, when BET started up Rap City in 89, did anybody consult with you since you um, were the man with the formula? Nobody came to me. I remember being a guest and going to D.C., being on Rap City, you know, and I just looked around, and I was like, well, 
I don't think I want to work here. <laughs> but nobody ever asked me anything. Nobody, nobody consulted with me about anything that had to do with with, with hip hop on the networks or on cable and i think there was a lot of things that were told like 95 percent well no, i shouldn't say 95 percent. let's say 75 percent of it was garbage and there was 25 percent of it that was good that that hung around and i was like man if i was involved i could just help them you know make it real and so that people could you know could have gotten into it a little bit more and maybe it would have lasted a little bit more and then would have been had more commercial value but this is the this was the beginning of the commercialization of hip hop. You had people getting into hip hop that had nothing to do with hip hop. The last thing they wanted was me around who really knew hip hop. So that's what the that's what was going on. Before we wrap, Ralph, Uncle Ralph. <laughs> Before we wrap up, would you like to freestyle? I'm not going to rap with you. No, that's not going to happen today. No, I'm only kidding. (laughs) Uh, But it could be. I could force you after I turn off this microphone. Well, Ralph McDaniels, you are to us an initiative radio black history maker. What I'd like to know is how you'd like to be remembered and regarded when you pass the torch to a successor. I think the most important thing to me is to do what I've done for other people. You know, you make people feel happy. You make people feel good. You leave uh, some type of um, a body of work that people can go back and reference and understand, you know, what was happening culturally at this particular time in history. For the next person, I would like them to go on and do the same thing. Because I'm a studier of, you know, what the, of history. You know, I go back and I look over other things that people have done, and especially with the Internet now, you have the ability to really find these things very easily. So just pass on a body of work. Be somebody. You know, that's why I always tell my daughter, what, are you going to be somebody or what? You know, are you going to mean something? You know, do something that means something. You know, leave some type of a, a, a monument to your community to your family first and be somebody that somebody can say like you know what he left the mark here and and i heard it well like i said earlier you don't spit rhymes but you certainly are probably the most prolific man in hip-hop right because your body of work is ridiculous it's, it's definitely um out there it's it's a, it's a wonderful thing and it's great because we we span over a long period of time so I get kids that were, you know, grew up with me who were probably the same age as me. And then we have, you know, a 15-year-old who's just kind of getting on the scene but kind of heard of Ralph McDaniel or stumbled across Video Music Box late night and saw something that they like. So, you know, it's it's pretty interesting that we reach everybody. Give us the onfumes.com, the, the schedule for VMB, your Twitter. <laughs> I do a Video Music Box here in New York City on NYC TV, which is the city TV station, NYC TV. And that's uh, Channel 25 or 22 on Cablevision on, on Saturday nights at 12 midnight. I also have a show called The Bridge, which comes on at 11 p.m. So two hours of Ralph McDaniels on Saturday night on Channel on NYC TV. Um, then we have onfumes.com. I do a live show on onfumes.com on Monday nights via live stream. Stream, and you can just go live stream slash on fumes um, dot com. The VMB Global, which you'll see more and hear more about in the next couple of weeks because we're going to have an events that are going up. I'm kind of a Facebook person right now, so I'm really on Facebook. I know you are as well. And so on, on Facebook, um, I'm Ralph McDaniels, and I pretty much go to that on a regular basis every day. And listeners, you can find me online at AngelaMcKenzie.com to hear encore broadcasts of the program. Please join me again next week. Initiative Radio is brought to you with the generous support of FeliciaCruz.com Fighting for Futures. Visit F-E-L-E-C-I-A-C-R-U-Z.com to keep up with live events featuring local talent and missions abroad to benefit underprivileged children. Initiative Radio is produced and hosted by Angela McKenzie. Post-production facilities provided by CDM Sound Studios, New York. Production assistance provided by Phil Mascantonio, Aaron Reed, Gary Wickham, Fidel Hidalgo, Anthony Shannon, Bo Hunter, Virginia Rejas, Shaka Nguenya, Sean Paris, Robert Pampa, and Rebecca Hoey. Additional assistance from Tom Boyd, Charles de Montebello, and Emily Pike. To reach the Initiative Radio team, send an email to initiativeradio at yahoo.com. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll be back next week.